Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley. In today's demonstration, we're going to be looking at center of mass. Center of mass is a really important concept in Newtonian physics, and it's going to have a significant bearing on the way planets behave in their orbits. And in particular, we're going to be looking at how it relates to Newton's correction to Kepler's first law. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be using a combination of physical demonstration, because this is a physics concept, I can actually demonstrate it here in front of my computer, and we're also going to be looking using the binary stars simulator from Nap Labs. First, what is center of mass? Center of mass is, to put it briefly, the balance point of an object. Any solid object has a balance point, and if you support that solid object beneath its balance point, you can, well, balance it. So take this pen, for example. If I find the balance point of this pen, oh, I managed that pretty quickly this time, if I find the balance point of this pen, I can support the pen just on the very tip of my finger, and it doesn't tip off one way or the other, but if I miss that, say try and hold it over here, the pen falls. And any collection of objects can have a balance point, no matter how complex those objects are. So a barbell or a collection of pool balls that have all been assembled into a nice rack, or even unconnected collections of objects like, say, stars and planets. All of those are going to have centers of mass. And those centers of mass influence how those objects behave collectively. When we're looking at planetary orbits, for example, Newton tells us that planets don't orbit the Sun at all. And instead of having the Sun at one focus of a planetary orbit, as Kepler said, instead the center of mass of the Sun-planet system is going to be at that focus. So let's look at what that means for the way planets behave. And we'll do that using the binary star simulator. So let's go to the eclipsing binaries simulator in my NAP labs and bring up the eclipsing binary simulator. Now this simulator has a lot of important features um, that are going to come back when we look at actual binary star systems, but for now we're just using this to mimic the center of mass and the influence. What I'm going to do is make sure that we're looking at this system from directly overhead so you can see what's going on. And then I'm going to configure the two stars in this system so it's easy to tell which one is the Earth and in our model and which one is the Sun. So I'm going to take the first star, I'm going to make it blue, and I'm going to shrink its radius and its mass way down. So now it's going to be acting like, say, the Earth. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the eccentricity of this system so that we don't have anything weird going on. We're just looking at perfectly circular orbits. So in this case, the Sun and the planet going around it have the center of mass at a location given by the X. So the X is hiding right now. Let's crank the mass up a little bit so you can see the X. So that X, for the configuration that I had chosen earlier, sits somewhere inside of the Sun. And this is pretty common. All of the, all of the planets in our solar system, except for Jupiter, have the center of mass of the Sun-planet system inside the Sun. So let's start the simulation and see what happens. You'll notice that the planet travels along its orbit, and the Sun moves in the opposite direction, so that the center of mass is always in between the planet and the Sun. But because the Sun is so much more massive than the Earth, the center of mass is very close to the Sun. If I stop this and start increasing the mass of my Earth, you'll notice that the center of mass is getting farther from the Sun and closer to the Earth. And if I go really extreme, I make the Earth much more massive than the Sun, then you'll notice now the Earth is closer to the center of mass. But that, that's pretty silly, so let's undo that. Let's get back to normal. So, as the Earth goes around the center of mass between the Earth and the Sun, 
then we see motion in the sun as well. Both the Earth and the sun are moving in this scenario. So it's not that the Earth is orbiting the sun. The Earth and the sun are both orbiting their common center of mass. And this is going to be really important when we talk about extrasolar planets later in the course. So this reflex motion in the sun produced by a planet's gravity is one way that astronomers can find planets in orbit around other stars. We'll talk more about that when we come there, but just keep this in the back of your mind and remember that this aspect of Newton's correction to Kepler's first law is going to come back. So if you can, play around with the simulator. Mess with the mass of the Earth or the size of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. See what effect that has on where the center of mass is and how much the Sun is moving. Have fun, and I'll see you in class.